Hi everyone, welcome to Spirit Alive Television. You're watching Spirit Alive across the country here and we're bringing you the Word of God that will bless you. We are grateful for our friends and partners across the nation and thank you for writing in. Thank you for letting us know how much you appreciate the program and how much it's doing for you. During the segment, we will come back and give you some announcement, but at the end, we'll pray with you as well. And if you can't wait, there's a number on the screen that you can call and you can talk to a prayer partner and they'll pray with you. We'll talk to you again real soon at the end of the program. John chapter 16, verse 23, 24. I'm going to talk about the name of Jesus. There's power in the name. You will ask the Father directly, and he will grant you your request because you use my name. Verse 24, you haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you'll receive, and you will have abundant joy. King James Version says, In that day you shall ask me nothing. For verily, or verily, verily, I say unto you that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto, or up until now, you have asked me nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And tonight I want to just share with you a few minutes about this idea. Not understanding the power of the name of Jesus diminishes your faith and the effectiveness of using your faith. And uh, we all need to understand the power of the name of Jesus. Not understanding his name, of course, will hinder your faith in the battles of life. Uh, there is power in the name of Jesus, as we've mentioned. We use his name in everyday use. We use his name in prayer. We use it for healing. We use it for coming against the devil. We use it for receiving everything from heaven. The key to receiving, as Jesus explains to us, is using that name in his name authorizes whatever we need from heaven. His name is as if, is, is, uh, as if he was there himself. So his name, when we use his name, it represents him and all that he is. So Colossians 3.17 says, the King James says, whatsoever you shall do, you do it in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God by him, giving thanks to God. So when we say, Lord, we lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That's what you're doing. You lift up your name and say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. In everyday life, in everyday battles of life, the scripture tells us, you know, to, in combat against the enemy, we use the name. God gave us the right to use a name, we have the privilege of using that name over all the power of the enemy. And uh, we have his name to use when we pray or demand from the devil to leave us alone or to back off using that name. So we, we use the name to demand from the devil. We don't demand from God, we demand from the devil. And uh, notice over here, John, Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and 17 to 19, the King James says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Or the word there, that word power is the Greek word, I believe it's exousia, which means authority. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. That word, the second word is power. It's actually the word uh, ability. Over, over all the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Uh, I like that nothing shall hurt you in the name. So we have protection in the name as well. And so we thank God for that protection. And Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Jesus gave us authority. When he left, he says that we are to use his name and uh, to battle all the enemy. He says, John 16, 17, in my name they shall cast out devils. You know, we, we 
to use a name to cast out devils. Notice over here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, or excuse me, verse 9 and 11, the King James says, and being found as a fashion, in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, the King James. So we have the ability, the right, the privilege to use the name of Jesus when we're exercising authority over the enemy. And these signs shall follow them in my name. One version says, and these signs will accompany those that believe in my name. In my name they shall cast out devils. We thank God that we can use that name to cast devils out. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. These are the signs. Using the name, speaking in tongues is a, is a, is a sign. And uh, they shall take up serpents. That's the uh, you know, protection from the enemy. And if they drink any deadly thing, that's if you go to someone's house, they're having something that's not good, or poison or something. And uh, if you make bad tea, no, you could drink something, it will not hurt you. You could, you could claim immunity from any kind of poison. Especially, you know, you should always pray over everything you claim. I always claim uh, that anything I drink, everything I eat, is blessed. Now, you don't have to be religious over it and tell everybody you're praying. Listen, everybody in the restaurant, I'm praying in the name. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they think you're crazy. But you can pray over your stuff or speak over it. And say, thank God for this food. I'm going to eat it in the name of Jesus. So, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You can claim emergency, or at least <laughs> claim that you're not going to have any kind of emergency. They shall lay hands on the sick. That's a sign. What will happen if you lay hands on the sick? It's that they will recover. He didn't say they'll instantly get well, but they'll recover. Recover is a process. So sometimes we think this guy, somebody laid hands on him. How do you feel? Well, I didn't feel anything. What, does it, what difference does it make? It it's not, we're not talking about feelings. We're talking about exercising our, our faith. Faith has nothing to do with feelings. If you feel the power, whether you feel the power or not, whether you fell down, whether you jump up in the air, if you cried, shout, it don't matter. All that stuff is just nothing compared to faith. Just believe God in the name of Jesus. Amen? Say, thank God for the name. Is it, is it your name? The government's name? Whose name is it? Faith City Church? No? Your whatever name. No? It's the name of Jesus. So Jesus gave the church the authority to use the name in battles against the enemy. The name is the key. Right? It's the key for the blessings that unlocks the doors. The key. You know, uh, you have a car key. You have a car key, I guess. So that it, it causes your, your car to start going, right? If you didn't have that key, you wouldn't go anywhere. You ever, lost, you ever left your key at home and you got to your car and you couldn't leave because you didn't have the key? I've done that a number of times. I said, well, I guess I got to go get the key. So next time you come up against the evil spirits or something, remember the key, right? You can't just say, well, you know, I think we'll just exercise the, the devil here, and, uh, but you have to use the name. Remember the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts where they're trying to use the name of Jesus? But that name didn't belong to them. They were not believers. They just said, I'm going to use that name that Paul uses. And that demon overcame them. So don't be overcome by that. Devils have to leave, right? 
the disciples used that name when they were sent out on missions. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 and 19, King James. And the, the 70 returned again. This is not the 12 apostles. These are 70 disciples that Jesus sent after he sent out the 12. So he sent out 70 more using the name. He said, in 70 returned again, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us to thy name. And he said unto them, Behold, I saw Satan falling from heaven. Behold, I give you power. We read that on serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. How much power? All the power of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Satan or the devil. And nothing shall hurt you. So when you're going out, use the name. You claim you know, power over the enemy, but also you, you, you claim protection over the enemy. So that's what I do every day. I say, thank you, Lord. God, for that protection, right? So John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, let's read the New, New Living. Again, we read this. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me, how many of you believe in Jesus? Said yes. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works, right, that I have done. And even greater works because I go to my Father. You can demand or you can ask. The word ask there is demand. He's not talking about prayer here. He's asking, he's talking about demanding. He said this again, another section, but he's not asking, he's not saying demanding, he's, he says asking. So whatever you ask, or the actual word is demand, in my name I'll do it, so that the Father will be glorified. He's not talking about demanding from him, he's talking about demanding from the evil spirits, because you're doing the works of Jesus. He says, so you can bring glory to the Father. Verse 14, you shall ask anything in my name and I'll do it. That's pretty good, isn't it? The key is using the name. But a lot of people don't think about it because, see, it hinders them. They never think about it ever because they were not taught about it. They never thought about the name of Jesus. And so it didn't do them any good. It's like, you know, people use the name of Jesus like a, a rabbit's foot. Good luck charm, you know, whatever it is, right? Wishbone. No, the name of Jesus is not a wishbone. It's not a good luck charm. So we use the name of Jesus. He gave us the name. So he's, so he's not referring to prayer here. He's referring to demanding of the enemy who lives here too. You know, the enemy is living next door. He lives next door to you. He's, he's, he's watching you, and he's, he's seeing what you're doing. You know, it's incredible. I was praying today, and I was just thinking about this, that God knows your thoughts. He knows your thoughts. God knows not, not only your thoughts, but every single person in the whole world, he knows their thoughts. That's incredible to think about. That blows out your sockets. Right? To know that God knows every single thought that everybody has, not only that, but he knows even the thoughts you say before. The scripture says that. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching the program. I believe that you're being blessed by the program, getting your heart built up. And the Bible says that the word of God will build up our hearts, keep us strong. You know, you need the word of God, a daily dose of the word of God. Don't wait for my program to come on when you get the word in your heart. You can read the Bible every day. You can go to our website, read our newsletters and sermons that I preach in the past, look at the program, hear it again. It's a wonderful way to get connected, stay connected with the Word of God. We love every one of you. We remember we're praying for you. We'll pray with you at the end of the program. And if you don't want to wait, and you can, if you want to pray right now, you can call that number at the screen there, and someone will pray with you. We'll be right back. 
Hello viewers and friends, we are offering a power pack of mini books that will encourage you and strengthen your faith. These mini books are filled with Bible-based teachings to help you in the areas of prayer, healing, and finances. We encourage you to get your power pack of mini books by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. When you request your books, please include your name and full mailing address. Just mail your donation to the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. Viewers like you help us share the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech. Faith Life Bible College is now accepting applications for the 2024-2025 school year. Applications are available at www.flbc.ca. For more information, please call 807-344-1956. Come and study, grow, serve. The scripture says that. So the following example here, we're going to see, is an application of using the name of Jesus when it comes to healing. We can use the name against the works of Satan and darkness. Uh, Jesus uh, over here didn't cause that man to be sick in the first place and, and, he, and then heal him through his name. No, the devil caused the person's sickness. We know that all sickness originates from the evil, the devil, you know. It might not be a devil there. It could be a cause of it. It's, it's all evil anyway, all sin. And uh, the devil did it. And he's causing people a lot of pain, a lot of problems in this world. And so God gave us the name. Let's go over here to uh, Acts chapter 3. In the three, several verses of scripture, now this is using the name of Jesus when it comes to healing. And so, Peter and John, John chapter 3, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. So here's someone who was born like this. He was born a cripple. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, one of the, called Beautiful Gate, so he could be begged from the people going to the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. And Peter uh, and John looked intently, and Peter uh, said, look on us. And the man looked on them eagerly, expecting uh, some money. And Peter said, I don't have any silver and gold, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Or just says, uh, um, you know, you go and make your own money. <laughs> you don't want to give him free cash. And Peter took the, the lame man by the right hand and started shoving him around. No, he didn't. He helped him up, right? He helped him up. And as the, as the man did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Oh, that's power. He jumped up, stood upon his feet, and began to walk. Then, walking and leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was a, the, same, the, the lame beggar that had been so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. And all rushed out in amazement and Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly unto Peter and John. Peter saw an opportunity and dressed the crowd. He said, people in Israel, he said, why are you so surprised about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power and godliness? Through faith in the name of Jesus. See, we have to have faith in the name or start hearing about what his name can do. Have faith in his name, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. Here we see that Peter and John use the name of Jesus because prior to that, Jesus had told them in the 14 and 16 chapters, he says, before, all this, before this, you, you'll ask me, after you'll ask me using my name. You'll ask the Father in my name, he'll do it. And whatever you demand in my name, I'll do it. And so uh, if you notice, except for one area, 
in the in the book of, of the book of Acts, you never see them praying to God. They just went around demanding in the name of Jesus. And, and we had one incident where Paul used the name in prayer. Most of them didn't use the name in prayer. They demanded that something should be done because they were demanding of the enemy, not God. So they used the name, demanding healing, uh, not from God, but uh, uh, from the devil's grip, as Jesus promised him earlier. There's no other name, the Bible says, whereby we might get saved or be, have salvation. The Bible says there's no other name to bring salvation. Salvation is an all-inclusive word, we'll see later, that, that includes healing and salvation itself and also refers to deliverance, healing, uh, or success and prosperity comes from that, uh, the name of Jesus. Let's go over here and see uh, a little further. Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 1 to 12. While Peter and John speaking to the people, they were conf confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. Somebody said that, why do you call these people Sadducees? Well, because they were sad, you see. They didn't have, they didn't have the same power of the name of Jesus. Okay? So they were sad, you see. Okay, verse 2. The leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people through the name, through Jesus, in the resurrected dead. They arrested them, and since they already, it was the evening, they put them in jail until the morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believed now were a total of about 5,000. A lot of people. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of the religious law met them, met them in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, along with Caiaphas, John Alexander, and their other relatives of the high priest. They brought the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Peter filled the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of el uh, and elders of our people. We are being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man. You know, he's, trying, he's arguing here on behalf of that. Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly say to you all and all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man you crucified by whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says the stone that the builders you builders rejected, has now become the, the cornerstone. Verse 12, I was mentioning earlier. There is salvation and no, no one else. That word salvation just doesn't mean being born again or being saved. That word also refers to, if you look in the, in the original language, it means having victory. It means having uh, uh, all your needs met. It means uh, deliverance from evil or evil uh, situations. It means... Uh, you know, of course, being saved and being healed. That word salvation is an all-inclusive word that means all those things that you need in life. There's no salvation in anyone, any, anyone else, but God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So we, we, all, we, we can use that name in our combat with the enemy every day. But we also can use it in our prayer time. And you go into prayer, you ask God something, you just use the name of Jesus. You don't just use the name of Jesus as a punctuation. When you stop your, your praying, you just use that name. You punctuate it or just stop it and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking in the name. That's a key for your prayer to work. Matthew 18, 19, and 20, the King James says, and again I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, what does it cover? It covers anything. How many people do you need to answer your prayer? Do you need all the Facebook friends? Did he say all the professional pastors and the most anointed pastors? No. It doesn't work like that. It works by the name of the, Everyone has a right to use the name. You don't have to call uh, Tulsa. You don't have to call anyone on Facebook. You can do this yourself. You don't need a professional. Right? But wait, do not use this at home. Be careful. 
<laughs> it could damage. No? You can, you can use the name yourself, right? So we're, we're how many people? Verse 20. He says, we're two or three gathered together in my name. People can say, well, see, it's a small meaning, so Jesus is here. Well, no, it means more than that. When he says, we're two or three gathered in my name, he says, I am there in the midst of them to make sure this happens. That's what he's talking about. It means that if you two people pray together about anything and ask anything that's anything according to the scriptures, I'll make sure it happens. I'll make sure it happens. We have to agree. So if you come up for prayer and I lay hands on you, I said, did you get healed? They say, well, I hope so. Well, it didn't happen. Because if one's believing, one's hoping, then there's no agreement, right? Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching the program. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time right now to invite Jesus in your life. The Bible says if we come to him, he'll meet all our needs, spirit, soul, and body. And that's why he died for us. And so if you come to Jesus, he promises to be with you all the days of your life. He'll walk with you no matter what happens in life. I found peace with God, and you can find peace with God too. I was just a young man in my early 20s when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and made a public you know, uh, declaration. I came to Christ and I invited him in my life, and he became my Lord, not just my Savior, my Lord, and I walked with him for all these years. And so you can do that right now. Let's go ahead and pray. If you've never had the opportunity, this is your chance now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Bow your heads with me and pray this prayer, sir. Dear Lord God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died for me, suffered on the cross, and he went to hell for me, and he rose the third day so that I could be justified. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. According to your word, I'm sitting there with him because I've invited you in my life and I confess you are my Lord and my Savior, that I'll never be afraid that I'm not guilty anymore. I'm not going to be condemned because Jesus Christ paid the price, paid for the penalty of giving me salvation. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my salvation. Amen. If you said a prayer like that, the Bible said, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's how it's done. Just call upon the name of Jesus to come in my life. You know, we pray these prayers. You know, you don't have to say all those prayers like that, but it helps when someone leads you in prayer. So God bless you. we we'll see you next time on Spirit of Life.